I guess you figured out already where we're at. Hey, it's Rick Crandall, and welcome to another edition of Aurora Faces and Places. Yep, you can't hide from the school bell, and you can't hide from the principal either. This is Maharad Ahmed, who is uh, incoming principal at Aurora Central High School. Yeah, coming in in the fall. In the fall. Coming from, in, you've been in the district. I've been in the district for eight years now. I was previously the principal at South Middle School, the feeder of Central High School, yeah. and at Gateway High School previously from that. Nice. Yeah. So you're here, you're here a bit early before you take over to get it ready for what's getting ready to happen here. Yeah, so it's very exciting. The district gave us an opportunity to really uh, be gifted a planning year and thinking about a magnet pathway that's coming into Aurora Central High School to really bring up the creativity that's in our community yeah. um, is uh, a blessing. I'm excited, you know, I'm a theater kid from this school, so, um, so I'm excited about the direction it's going, but uh, arts, yeah. right? Yeah, so we have two uh, ways that our students can be involved with uh, the arts. We have our multimedia arts pathway um, or our performing arts. And we have creative labs under those, like digital music, yeah. um, animation, game design, film production. Wow. And so those are the programs we're bringing in. And students from other high schools in Aurora can come here to participate in those programs? That's yeah, so what's, what's gonna work is a magnet pathway. They can audition an interview within, uh, and we're, we're accepting incoming ninth graders right now. Okay. And so we still service the comprehensive neighborhood yep. students here, and central kids can apply to be a, a part of the pathway as well. Nice. And we wanna bring a, build a bridge between the pathway and central together. I'm excited about this. This really sounds like something you know, a bit innovative, right? Yeah. Something certainly new for APS. It sounds pretty exciting. And something new for APS in a sense that it's our first visual and performing arts magnet campus. We also yeah. have a K-8, which is going to be the Burrell K-8 that feeds into the Burrell pathway. And so this is going to be the Charles Burrell campus. Okay. Yeah. And for anybody that's lived uh, in the metro area a long time, that's not an unfamiliar name. Charles yeah. Burrell, great musician here in town. Yep. And, that's awesome. Talk to me about the kids these days, you know, here at Aurora Central. I, I, you and I have talked, we've gotten to know each other. When I came here, I think the demographics were like flip-flopped from what they are now. It was, you know, maybe 5% minority. When I went here in the early 70s, now it's 5 to 7% white population at the school. It's dramatically different from my experience. They're still kids. Kids are kids. They want to be loved, they want to be cared for, they want to be creative, they want yeah. to be sparked. Um, and this is a way that um, even the demographics have shift, they're humans. Yeah. And we have kids from all over the world that are coming together and we got to tap into their creativity and build their confidence for jobs and skills that haven't even created yet. You know, different from my experience, your experience, uh, when they come now, some need help with English, right? Yeah. As, as a to become initially a second language, maybe a primary language, um, but they also come with other needs. I mean, uh, maybe there's health needs, maybe there's, uh, you know, so creating a, a little additional support at home to make them yeah. successful here. Yeah, and so as you say, thinking about students that are coming new to the language, we have a newcomer house here at Central High School where uh, previous individuals have come together and, and planned something for the new students that are coming to America, as well as new students to the language. Uh, we also have a way for students and families to access our wellness center. And this is about our community and we're a community school and we want to make sure that we're hearing the voices of our parents, our students. Yeah. Um, so because it's their system and we're just helping support them so that when they leave here, they're, they're ready to go. A sense at all in, in an immigrant community, uh, uh, maybe a population that, uh, you know, the people in authority are, are, you know, a little intimidated by, right? And, and here you're inviting them to be a part of the family. It's necessary for them yeah. to be, a, I mean, it's as much an education for the parents in many ways of immigrants yeah. as it is for their kids. Yeah. I think I go back to my personal experience. I've, I've come from parents of immigrants. My parents immigrated from Bangladesh. And I think about how people looked at us uh, when we were walking down the street or yeah. we were um, in the hallway cutting up a little bit and yeah. people were coming straight to us like, no, you're, you, what are you doing? And we're like, we're just talking, right? Yeah. And so we want to make sure we change that narrative in a sense of Kids are being kids. It doesn't matter where you come from, what color you are. Yeah. We, but we need to recognize their stories and where they're coming from and hear about yep. who they are as people. Yep. You know, 40 however many years ago when I was here, the things that uh, I'm sure concerned the faculty and the, the administration was, you know, we had a smoking area outside, <laughs> right? And we, you know, maybe we were getting somebody to buy cheap 3-2 beer. And I mean, that, that was really it. I mean, it was... 
there's so much more that these kids are being introduced to at such a younger age. Well, I think that's the access to information so quickly, uh, the way to look through Snapchat, Instagram, and get the ideas that we need to keep up even more where um, an old school way of doing education yeah. is doesn't fit yeah. for this next generation. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking to people from Aurora, eavesdropping on our conversation yeah. today, and if you, if you could help me say to them, you know, here's how we can all as a community help these kids. Here's, right, yeah. the, the challenges that they're, I mean, I, I'm tired of, of reading about bad kids or the yeah. perception of bad kids. So, you know, like you say, let's change the narrative and how do we go about that? I think recognizing there are kids that are coming from our community and we have an obligation to serve them. And thinking about we need to recognize from their stories what their traumas were and help and support them with the, with the tools they have to, to take that next step out of high school. Yeah, I'm a huge believer in conversation. I, I have been, in fact, my early report cards um, say I was too much of a believer in conversation and not enough of a believer <laughs> in studying, right? But I was getting my hair cut the other day and it was uh, by a Vietnamese immigrant who happened to work there. She came here when she was 12 years old, couldn't speak a word of English. And I didn't want my hair cut to end because it was so engaging to hear her experience. and. Yeah. and how grateful she was to be here. Don't shy away from conversation. The moral of the story for, for anybody, for sure. if you're at a restaurant, if you're at a park, if you're somewhere, and somebody who looks a little bit different than you is there, say hi. Yeah, and I think coming out of COVID, this is an opportunity to get to know people more, socializing yeah. a little bit more. What about the team here, your faculty here? It's, it's gonna take a special group to, to yeah. handle the place, right? So what I can say is we have a dedicated group of educators here that are coming together for this common vision that we want. We wanna empower our students to be creative, confident, and caring. And we're coming in, we're calling the three C's. And having those three C's come together um, is how we're instilling in our leadership team of like, we're learning about ourselves first. We're learning about each other's stories. We model that for our teachers, for our students, so we can learn everybody's stories to come together. So this dedicated staff is buying into that. And I think the one thing that my grand children have taught me, right? I've, I come from the, you know, the bygone eras. <laughs> and so the one thing they have taught me seriously is that people want to see themselves reflected in their surroundings, yeah. in their environment. So as this growing immigrant community comes here, you know, to walk in the doors and see people that look like them that are teaching and, yeah. and people that can speak to them, yeah. that's, that's ridiculously important. I have learned that. Yeah. It is important and, and it's a way to just engage and have that smiling face and knowing that, hey, there are a lot of similarities, even if we are different. Yeah. And so where do we find that common ground too? Houston, Texas, huh? Yeah, born and raised. It's hot there in Houston. Hot and humid, that's why I moved to Colorado. <laughs> Bangladesh, do you have family in Bangladesh? I do, or? I have a lot of uh, cousins, aunts and uncles. My parents immigrated here back in 1971. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Bangladesh is uh, really dear to my heart and just knowing that it's a, the culture is really about language and arts and yeah. now I have the chance to lead an opportunity for our community to really think about language and arts yeah. as well. Did they? Did they become for uh, an, an opportunity or did they? Yeah, so my parents came over on a um, East Pakistani passport and uh, they were going through a revolutionary war between um, East Pakistan and Pakistan and, Bangal and East Pakistan was fighting for their language and their culture and their arts. Okay. And that became Bangladesh and my parents, uh, my dad came over for grad school and my mom was still there but her parents wouldn't let her leave unless she was married. And they were a love marriage and they okay. got married over the phone. <laughs> They have a two-day wedding anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> Married <laughs> over the phone. Yeah. Hey, there might that might be a business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as as an Aurora Central alum, as somebody who uh, honestly has such great love for this building and and for the people that have been here, um, I, I'm excited to have you in charge. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, that. You're, I, you're the right leader at the right time. Um, and for anybody who's watching who is an Aurora Central High School alum, what would you say to them? Invite them back? Yeah, please come back. Um, I know I've talked to Steve Hester, who's the alumni president. We're yeah. trying to stuff, set things up for the alumni to come back and be a part of our community. We want you back. I am. <laughs> Steve, I think I can run faster than you now, too. I'm not quite sure, but maybe, yeah. maybe. Go Trojans, you know? Go Trojans. <laughs> All right, I hope you, uh, come away from the time we've spent together with a little clearer understanding of 
you know, the, the challenges facing uh, education, certainly, but the quality of people that are leading it uh, by the example here and by many examples that you may know. And if you're a graduate of an Aurora school, go back, visit. See how you might be able to help the community and the mission and the work that they're doing. And uh, if not, uh, find those that are in your community that look a little bit different than you and say, hey, and tell them you're proud they're here and you're pleased to meet them. And let's start a greater conversation. Thanks, my awesome. friend. Thank you, sir. Go Trojans. Go That's going to do it for this edition of Aurora Faces and Places. I'm Rick Crandall. We'll see you around town somewhere next time.